if you try to get your nutrition on point and you don't have like staple things in your diet and you're like trying to go by recipe books, you will fail. You'll fail. Do you understand like the simplicity of cutting, bulking, maintaining when you have that power? Like, oh, I gotta do this like whole new thing. No, 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 no. You just eat less. Leave, there's not one diet that's better than the next, especially if you don't have details. Because if you say, well, what diet's the best? I'm gonna say, What's going on, everybody? My name's Stefan Coons. Welcome to the Everyday Pursuit. For those of you that are new, we created this podcast. I created this podcast for my team and the clients we serve. And we serve the Everyday Hero community. So we work with a lot of first responders, medical professionals, military, uh, teachers, mostly, and not a lot of teachers, but like an everyday hero. And to me, that's somebody that serves others. Yes. So we work with a lot of nurses, firefighters, cops military, you know, prior and past border patrol, like that group of people. Um, I'm a veteran, my wife's a nurse and we've helped transform man, like five to 600 first responders in the last three years. I just say first responders, you know, everyday hero community in the last couple of years, um, through our custom exercise programming. Um, and it's been awesome. And because we're online, we've been able to help people in about 41 States, a couple different countries, and we made a huge transformation. So I do this podcast to help you if you're listening to this. It is kind of designed for first responders, but that's only like 80% of our clients. Well, you have about 20 to 25% of our clients that don't have anything to do with that community. Or maybe they're like, oh, my dad's a vet or my friend or whatever. And some people, nothing. They're just like, I like what you do or you're a good coach. Or I've seen, if you've seen on our Instagram, like, wow, you can get people shredded and jacked and you have really good reviews and you have really good client testimonials. So if you can help a firefighter and a cop and somebody in SWAT or somebody getting in shape for special forces, you can help me, which the logic is very sound. We can. Um, but I want to talk to you guys about nutrition. So that that's who we are. But I want to talk to you about nutrition because I feel like nutrition is one of those things that's highly debated. Most trainers don't debate a lot about training, like exercise. I'm not saying it's not debated, but I see nutrition. It's very dogmatic too. Like, oh, keto's the way, or a vegan, or a carnivore, blah, blah, blah. And I'm not, I am a non-dogmatic approach to nutrition because I've tried every super strict diet. I've tried keto, carnivore, paleo, whole 30, vegan, vegetarian. The vegan and the vegetarian weren't very long, like 30 days apiece. Um, I've tried almost every diet because I knew when I was a coach that I needed to like talk to people about it and give my general take. And look, I'm not here to debate it. Some people treat nutrition like a religion. Like they're like, ah, oh, this is the only way. And I don't want to be like that. I don't think we're like that really with any of our clients. It's really based on what you want to do, but I'll give you my general consensus. And so in this episode, I'm going to tell you about what carbs that I like to eat for me. And I will tell you what I've seen be most effective with clients. So let's just dive right in. Now, first I need to make this statement. If you're trying to do, if you're a first responder, specifically performance-based, so tactical athletes, so cops, firefighter, border patrol, people that like have to chase people or go into burning houses or use a lot of physical exertion on duty, check this out. I don't suggest keto and low carb. I don't think that's the way to go. Um, you know, more power to you if you can, if you can operate. But I felt like when I was in the military and I didn't have a super physical job, I was a mechanic. Okay. I didn't have to do the things you guys did, but, but I was training a lot in the gym. I was doing jujitsu. So I was training a lot. I was also, also a PTL. So even though my actual job, which is like pretty physical, not the same, I have to chase bad guys or go into burning houses, but I had to, I was really physical outside. So I know like what I felt like when I was exerting myself. And every time I did like keto or like super low carb, which I would say like for my body weight, I'm like 175 to 180 pounds. Anything over under a hundred carbs was like no go. I just... I was grumpy. I had brain fog. Like I could do it, but I'd almost rather be on keto and make that transition over where my body's burning ketones. And a little bit of science lesson, guys, when you eat carbs, they're converted to two things, glucose, which is your blood sugar, right? Because carbs are broken down to sugar. So like, I don't eat sugar. Well, do you eat carbs? Yes. Carbs are broken down to sugars, right? There's different type of saccharides and uh, different sugar molecules, which I'm not going to give you a science lesson, but they're broken down. And so they're basically stored at, in as glucose, blood sugar, and in your liver and in your muscle as a form of glycogen, which are just carb storage. And if you know, you ever get like, let's say you ever eat sushi or like white rice or a bunch of carbs or a crushed pizza. And if you have to be kind of lean for this to happen, 
but I you don't have to be super lean, but you ever eaten a lot of carbs and you feel full, like maybe you went in the mirror and like flexed or like ate a lot of carbs and got a good pump. Well, have you ever been on the opposite end when you don't have any carbs and you look flat and you look like freaking like you lost all your muscle? Yeah. I mean, that's just water and glycogen being stored. So just understand that. But for a lot of my tactical athletes, I don't want you guys being on super low carb. I don't think it's super beneficial. Now, if you wanted to do something like carb cycling, would you be like, well, coach Stefan, what's carb cycling? Carb cycling is you have moderately like carb days, hey, 220, 250 grams of carbs. And then on your off days where you're not training, maybe where you're not at work, you can go low carb because you don't need the energy. So it's basically a diet where saying, hey, because carbohydrates are the main source of energy and because I'm using the carbohydrates to train, I want to eat the carbohydrates on, and, and use the fuel on the day that I'm going the most, like a car, right? You fill the car up, the tank all the way on your long road trips. If you're just going down the street, maybe you don't need that much gas. And that's kind of how I view it. And that's totally fine. But when you're on duty, I think you should be decently well fueled, right? Not to the point where you're brain foggy, not to the point where you're lethargic because now you're putting your life and other people's at danger. That's how I, I that's my thing. Okay. And so, you know, I, I've seen so many first responders. I mean, and this could be even like a 911 dispatcher. Your brain has to be on, okay? Now, if you're full keto and you're producing ketones and you're in ketosis, you can have a really clear mind, but like that transition's miserable, it sucks, and I don't think it's a good performance tool, so I try to get away from keto. Now, it doesn't mean that you can't do low carb. I've met people that do low carb that are, just seem to not, it doesn't affect them. It affects me. I don't like it. And so I would rather do this. Instead of going super low carb, I'd rather just lower it slightly. I don't mess with my protein. Protein always stays the same. So for me, let's just give you raw, some, some general numbers. Oh, my protein's 180 to 190 grams a day. Cool. That never really changes even during a cut in a bulk. Not really. Okay. Within reason. And maybe my carbs were 250 and my fats were 84. I'm just going to go and I'm going to cut my carbs. And maybe I'm saying, Hey, I'm going to have 175 grams of carbs. I'm going to feel that that's a cut. I mean, what is that? Like 75 less. So I, I'm going to feel that cut. Um, and that'd just be 75 times four. So what is that? Like uh, 600 calories, right? I'm doing that right. 300 calories. I'm sorry. Um, so 300 calories less I'm cutting from, from carbs. And then I might say like, oh, I'm going to cut 15, 20 grams of fat. So I still want to get in like a five or 600 calorie deficit, but I'm not going all from one source. And I think a lot of people do this like unbeknownst to them. What they do is they just cut out like these major things that they're doing. And that's what like, okay, so that's what paleo does. I like paleo, okay, which is meats, nuts, fruits, and vegetables. But if you're only getting your carbs from fruits, veggies don't count, okay? I'm not even counting those. If you're only getting your your carbs from fruits, the chances of you eating like 220, 250 grams from fruit, you're like, oh, I could do that easily. Okay, but like generally people don't, right? And what if I said, okay, you can't have any bananas or mangoes or watermelon or grapes, you're like, so I could just have like berries and yeah, just berries. Like, what if you just did that? Good luck. But berries are really low glycemic. Will you get shredded? Yes. Are you going to get shredded just because they're berries and they're low glycemic and they don't spike your blood sugar that much and they have a fiber and, and stuff like that? I mean, not really. You'll look better because they're just like, you're not eating all the other processed stuff, but really you're not eating that much carbs. If we really sat down and calculated your macros, maybe you're only eating like a hundred and hundred grams or 120 grams a day. So even when I did like, uh, and it wasn't the whole 30, like paleo, I would track my macros and I could only get to like 160. And I felt like I was eating so much fruit. It was gross. So, you know, by happenstance of doing these diets, not keto, but like whole 30 paleo, whatever, I guess carnivore is basically a little bit like keto in a way. Um, but like, you know, those, those are things where you just end up being low carb. It's not really because it, there's like a magical fairy dust on it. And if you do those and you feel really good, like we have some law enforcement and tactical athletes that do carnivore and they say they feel good. But the majority that I talked to are like, ah, the transition's hard. And again, if you're going all the way to ketosis and you're producing ketones, that transition's always gonna be rough, but there's a tipping point where you actually have mental clarity. I would be okay with that. If that's really the route you go, I'm not a big fan of the keto diet. I don't think it's super sustainable, especially like as a social life. If you have family kids, more power to you, but I don't like it. 
Um, and I think there's other ways. It's like, well, why are you doing keto? Oh, for the health benefits. No, you're not. You're doing keto to be shredded and you don't need to. I mean, look at me. I don't, I don't do keto like at all. I eat a lot of carbs. I eat oat, oat bran and oatmeal every day. I pick up my son's candy dish from Halloween. I'm guilty. I can still stay shredded. I don't train that much guys, but the majority of my meals are healthy, just whole foods. It's not overly complicated. So let me get in the carbs. My favorite carb source, which I just talked about, um, is oat bran. I don't know why I like it. And you say, well, what's oat bran? It's oatmeal, right? It's the bran of the oat. So it's a little more fiber. It's a little more protein. And I just like put like, uh, a, about a half of cup, uh, roughly, maybe not even that much, like two third. No, I don't know. It's like a quarter cup or whatever. Maybe it's a half a cup of oat bran and water. And I just microwave it. And the thing about oat bran is it, it's better at absorbing water. So I feel like it, it, it expands more in my stomach and it keeps me full. And it's really not that many carbs. I do about, I think like 30 or 35 grams of carbs. I think there's like five or six grams of protein, a couple of grams of fiber. I feel really full and I mix things into it. I either mix my um, PB fit, which is like PB two, it's powdered peanut butter, very low calorie, um, very high in protein. You know, you're not really having any fat. So I'll do that. And then like some chocolate protein powder. So I'm like a chocolate peanut butter. It's like a ghetto Reese's peanut butter, but like way healthier. Right. Um, so I'll do something like that. I do that once or twice every single day, because if I do that in the morning, I'm like, okay, I got about 40 grams of carbs. I got about 28 to 30 grams of protein in this bowl. It took me like no time to make. It was good. I sometimes put like berries in there and vanilla protein powder. So I, you know, it's, it's plain. So I can make it whatever flavor I want, just like oatmeal. And it's just a really easy, quick carb source for me. I actually had it a couple hours before this and I get full for like three or four hours versus if I pick it like my son's snack bars or some cereal, like it does nothing to me, guys. Even fruit, I like fruit, but fruit feels like it doesn't fill me up. Like I can eat an apple and an hour and a half later, I'm hungry. Is it a better carb source? Probably, it's more, you know, not as processed, but like I end up eating more calories when I eat fruit a lot of the time, I swear to God. Like I could eat four bowls of oat bran a day maybe five. So, you know, let's just say, let's just say, and sometimes they're smaller. If they were 30 grams of carbs, I mean, you're looking at like what, 120 grams the whole day. We'll sprinkle in some other things, 160 grams. I mean, it's not a lot of carbs and I've been very full all day. And that allows me to go in the gym, perform like an animal because I feel full. Okay. So that's my number one. Number two is sweet potatoes. Probably not a surprise. A lot of you guys, if you haven't gone on the sweet potato train, I highly suggest it. I love sweet potatoes. You know, I, my wife, sometimes she does a lot of the cooking. She's awesome. She makes them like, I like them more crispy, but you have to understand that if you bake sweet potatoes, it actually makes the glycemic index go up and they're more sugary. So yes, yeah, sweet potatoes become worse as you bake them. They become healthier as you boil them. New, new information might be mind blowing to you. But so I kind of generally like to boil them. Um, I know she cuts them and then like puts them on a pan. So they're like halfway in between. I don't really know the glycemic index of it. I really don't care. I just know when I eat sweet potatoes, I seem to look better, feel better and perform better. I'm not kidding. Like I think feel me, for me, and this is most potatoes in general, but I know sweet potatoes have the beta carotene in them. That's why they're orange. Uh, a little more vitamin A, I think K, don't quote me on the last vitamin. And I feel like they're just, I just feel better on them. You know, like I could go eat some russet potatoes or some things like that. Sweet potatoes, I don't know, man. I, I just end up feeling like I get more shredded. And I know because when I did the paleo diet before and I ate meats, nuts, fruits, and vegetables, I had like a normal amount of fruit. I had a ton of sweet potatoes. Like I'm talking about, I don't even know, 150 grams of carbs towards sweet potatoes. I made sweet potato bread and all this and I just felt like better doing that. And it's probably also because I was getting rid of like protein powders and protein bars and processed things, but like that is my fuel source. And then the third, which I just kind of dogged on, but I really do believe is fruit. So I know if I could stick to like, basically it's paleo, right? Meats, nuts, fruits, and vegetables and sweet potato. That's I consider, I don't know why, why sweet potatoes is part of paleo. I've always said it was. Somebody probably added it in because they're like, I want sweet potatoes, but like, that's how I look at it. And you don't need to follow a freaking. by the way, you don't need to follow a structure. I just am giving you guys an idea. So I eat just meats, nuts, fruits, and vegetables. And then for like my carb sources, quote unquote, my like bigger 
things that fill me up more. It's like oat bran and sweet potatoes. That's mostly it. Does that mean that I never eat like bread and different things when I go out and like eat burgers or have beer? No, I, I do those things. I'm talking about my main, what's 80% of my diet that I'm like you eat the same thing every day. Kind of. I like it. I don't know. The oat bran can be a different flavor every time. When I eat eggs in the morning or I get like Greek yogurts, there's a million flavors for Greek yogurt. It's not that I eat the same thing, but I have staples. And if you're, if you try to get your nutrition on point and you don't have like staple things in your diet and you're like trying to go by recipe books, you will fail. You'll fail. I don't think recipe, everybody goes, do you have like a meal plan and a recipe guide? And I want all these extravagant things. Nope. Simple and boring. Simple and boring is how you make consistent gains and how you look really good and how you perform well. Then when you go out, be extravagant. When you go out on date night, do it up, get the sushi, get the sake, do whatever you want. But when you're at home or when you're eating, you're just like filler meal meals, just like, Hey, this is what I'm eating for fuel, not for taste. Just like to fuel my body staples, man, just simple things. Don't overcomplicate it. The more complicated you get your nutrition, the worse it's going to be. Just like take what, take your list and just do this. Just squish it. I just eat these couple things. It's way easier to hit your macros. It's way easier to track your macros. You don't have to really even track your stuff because you're like, I eat the same thing every day. And I know Coach Bryce and Ryan and Mike and Riley and all of us eat like the same stuff mostly every day. When you go to the grocery store, we're ordering the same things. So pick a couple carb sources you like. I actually give my clients this list and there's like, you know, carbs. There's, you know, 30 things on there. Oh, uh, banana and berries and yams and sweet potatoes and rice. Pick whatever one that you like. I'm telling you the ones that I like and the ones that I feel like I can perform. I stay lean and I stay shredded. You might say, well, Coach Stefan, do you notice a difference when you eat like rice and bread and stuff? Yeah, but but here's the thing. I train a lot and carbs are a fuel. So if if I don't train, if if, if I was if I could only train like three days a week, I would 100% do like paleo. I'd probably just cut out the oat brand maybe and do more sweet potato stuff. And if I wanted to stay shredded, okay, and perform, uh, even when I bulk, usually the only thing I do, don't laugh at me, is I just, I eat those things, same things, I just add more. So instead of doing like one scoop of oat brand, I do two. Instead of doing like one bowl of berries and yogurt, I just double it. You see how easy that is? That's what I do when I bulk. You don't want to know what I do when I cut? I just don't have my oat brand in the morning. Yeah, that's it. Oh, and then I, 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 next time that I go to do my sweet potato, I cut it in half. Do you understand how easy that is? Do you understand like the simplicity of cutting, bulking, maintaining when you have that power? Like, oh, I got to do this like whole new thing. No, 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 no. You just eat less. You just eat less. Oh, you're bulking. You just eat more. You don't need a whole new diet plan. You don't need a whole new, I mean, the macros change, right? But you don't need like a whole new extravagant thing. You eat more, you eat less, you eat the same. That simple. But when you're sitting there and you're like taking your carb sources, you could do the same thing with fats and proteins too. And you're like, oh, I'm getting them from all these different things. No wonder you can't stick with anything. No wonder you're so inconsistent. You have too many options, right? You got, it's like a little kid in a candy store. They're like, I can't pick one, right? But if you're like, hey, we're going, to, we're going to the front desk, you could have chocolate, vanilla, or strawberry. They're like, oh, only three options. Yeah, they pick quicker, right? We're the same way as adults. We have to be able to just like, simplify nutrition down. And when you're meal prepping and doing that, and like, if you're like, oh, I can't just eat those things. That sounds miserable. Okay. Don't, don't do sweet potatoes, do rice, do beans. It doesn't matter. But like the more ingredients you add, it's harder to track your food. The more options you have, the less consistent you'll be. Okay. So those are the carb sources that I feel like for me are, are the best. Um, also there's three things. Okay. I want to break down a little more science too. Carbs, when you eat carbohydrates, guys, those are used for fuel primarily while you're working out, okay? Fats, the fats you eat, not your stored fat, the fats you eat are more used at rest because when you're exercising, there's three different energy systems, okay? Um, there's your ATP, CP, which is like really fast bursts. There's your glycolytic, which is, you know, glycogen. It's more of that medium kind of high intensity. And then the oxidative, which is slow, steady. So people say, oh, you're in your fat burning zone, which pisses me off because it's, it's true, but it's, there's a lot of, ask me about it on social media. There's a lot of like, that's not really, it's kind of a marketing gimmick. And so a lot of the stored body fat that you want to get rid of, you know, when that's burned at rest. Yeah. When you're chilling this, why? Because it's oxidative. 
And when your oxygen levels go up, when you're like working out at a higher intensity, when you're like jogging past a certain speed or lifting at a higher intensity, your body actually, it, the, it becomes, it's probably metabolically flexible already, but it burns a different fuel source. So you got to think of like, what energy source do you need? Your body, your body is burning both fats and carbs at the same time all day long, by the way. I don't want you to think it's just an on and off switch, but the ratio changes too, okay? It's called your RER, your respiratory exchange ratio. I know it's very sciencey, but I want you guys to understand that there is science behind this. So when people say like, oh, eat carbs, eat fats, they're a fuel source. What are you doing, right? What type of workouts are you doing? Are you sprinting and chasing bad guys? Eat carbs. Are you doing this like low, long, long grind in your fire suit where you're like, your heart rate really doesn't get up that much, but like you are hot and you are sweaty. Maybe fats is better because that's kind of more of a sustained fuel source. I mean, you still want carbs too, but like, what are you using? What are you, how are you performing? Because that should dictate primarily your fuel source. Your body is really smart though. Your body's going to be able to like change its fuel source and become metabolically flexible, which basically means your ability, its ability to say like, oh, I'm going to use carbs right now. I'm going to use fats or I'm going to change the ratio. So the three things that I like to do, like I said, those are my carb sources. I told you the foods I like, and here's a couple ways to implement them. Number one, carb cycling, which I think I talked about at the beginning of the episode. I just recorded like two more. So my brain is, um, carb cycling. So basically those would be like, Hey, on my off days, I'm less carbs on my days that I'm working out harder or at work, I'm going to have more carbs. Pretty simple, right? You, you, you eat the fuel when you're going to use it. Okay. Um, intermittent fasting can be really beneficial too. Because maybe like, for example, if you have, I mean, this is maybe not the greatest example, but if you didn't have a job that was super physical and you're like, Hey, I'm going to skip breakfast. I mean, that's really how simple intermittent fasting is. I'm just not going to eat breakfast. I'm only going to eat two meals. My breakfast is normally 560 calories. So there you go. I'm in a 560 calorie deficit. If you ate a big dinner the night before, you're probably okay. It's probably not going to really perfect your, uh, effect your performance. Sorry. Um, so you're probably okay. Intermittent fasting generally is pretty safe. You're not going to be like, oh, I missed breakfast, so I can't chase this guy. Like you're not going to have that bad of hunger pains, okay? It's not going to be like a really low carb or a keto. You might have a little bit of hunger pains, but you also know your next meal is coming. And then the third and easiest way, it's probably the most work, but I think that it's the most long-term, it's the most simple way would be tracking your macros, right? Like then you don't have to do any of it. Like you can, tracking your macros and knowing exactly the fuel you eat actually gives you the most freedom. You can eat whatever foods you want, which is I-I-F-Y-M, which is a diet saying if it fits your macros. So you can have Pop-Tarts and you can have beer and you can have whatever, as long as, you know, if you get in 200 grams of carbs, doesn't matter where it comes from. And it is kind of true. There's been studies where this guy ate McDonald's every day for like 60 days and lost a bunch of weight. Doesn't matter the quality of the food. You're going to feel like crap. It's really bad for your health. You shouldn't do it, but there's some truth to it. So what I do is I do an 80-20. I mostly eat the f- the foods that I told you. The other 20% or 25%, I don't care. I will do IIFYM. I will have beer. I have a diet of Dr. Pepper over there. Don't judge me. Um, I, you know, whatever. I like to live a little bit. I don't want to just eat like super clean all the time. I like food. I like beer. I want to be able to have froyo with my son or, you know, eat pizza or whatever, right? It's not a lot of my food, but it's it's some of my food. And tracking my macros allows me to do that. If 80% of my food like I say, I'm doing 250 grams of carbs a day or 200 grams. And the vast majority of, of my carbs come from those things. And I go fill up the last 50 grams or whatever, uh, in a donut. Like, I mean, come on, it doesn't make a, that big a difference, right? It's like not a huge deal because it's, it's what you do consistently that makes the big difference. So again, carb cycling, intermittent fasting, macro tracking, those are the three that, that I use. You can follow like a really strict diet program too, if you really wanted, which would be like, Hey, you're going to only eat these, these foods on these days. And for some people that don't want to meal prep and weigh things out and put it in Tupperware, following like basic rules is easier. And that's why at our company, we take a super custom approach. Like, yes, we generally have things that work better. Intermittent fasting and macros work really good with our clients, but like we do have some people that want something just different doesn't really matter. There's not a one size fits all. And there's actually, I believe there's not one diet that's better than the next, especially if you don't have details. Cause if you say, well, what diet's the best? I'm going to say, it depends. What are your goals? What's your body type? 
What do you do physically? Like, what are you trying to, perf- what is your body trying to do? Cause that's going to dictate it. Is the, is keto the best of burning fat? I mean, it depends, right? Like it depends on like how much you're training and your body, right? Like there's not a one size fits all. So just understand that when you're kind of exploring nutrition, it is a bit, it, it is, I've been doing this for a long time. It is a little bit exploratory. You do need to sit there and figure out, hey, what's going to work for me? I'm somebody that can eat basically the same things. I have clients tell me, dude, I can eat the same things every day. It doesn't bother me. Sweet. You're going to be really successful on your diet. I have some people like, I can't just eat the same day. If I meal prep and my food's over two days old, it disgusts me. Okay, that's fine. We don't have to do that. I just want you to know you're going to be eating a lot of snacks or you're going to have to cook every day. I'm too busy to cook every day. Okay, this is just going to be a really big struggle for you to be successful, right? Because you don't want to prep your food. You don't want to... You know, you don't want to eat a bunch of snacks and you don't like to cook. What else are you going to do? I'm just going to go out to eat. Yeah, you actually can do that. But when you, you're going to be limited on the places because you have to have places that are like macro friendly and healthy. You know what I mean? Like I'm not against it. We have to just find solutions based on what you want to do. So again, these are the sources that I really like. Um, when I do like five to six days a week of lifting, a lot of like functional bodybuilding stuff. I, I think it's more beneficial for me to eat more carbs and train harder in the gym than to eat less carbs and train less hard. For me, I like training. I like working out for a time efficiency for you guys that are first responders and really busy and are struggling to make it three days in the gym. Don't do that. Don't be like, I'm going to eat high carbs and train more because you're not three days a week is not a lot. Right. Um, but it is also, again, it's very based on specifically what you feel best fits your schedule. That's the best way I could say it. So Um, hopefully this was helpful. I know at the end, it's a lot of like wishy washy, but it is hard for me to come on here and say, guys, do, do this exact thing. I don't like that because, and this is why we do custom coaching. It does depend. It it depends on your situation. I'm giving you some things to try. These are real, go try these. These are real tangible things. I'm giving you actual tangible foods to eat, but you might do it and be like, Stefan sucks. This is terrible. I have clients that do these exact things that crush it and love it and feel like it gives them a lot of flexibility. So you got to find out what's best for you. Cool. So I appreciate it, guys. Um, I do ask that you like, comment, subscribe, share this episode if you found, find it was valuable. If you have specific questions on nutrition, hit me up on Instagram. It's at S-T-E-F-A-N, first name Stefan, right? K-U-N-Z, Coons, underscore FIP. Or you can go to our website, thepursuithp.com. You can fill out a form there if you want to, you know, if you're interested in our coaching and what we do and what we work with our clients, but I I'm here to give you information and to help you out guys. Um, we are launching some pretty cool stuff coming soon. So tune in we're going to actually build up our community a little more, uh, with an online platform and give you guys some education and kind of build up that. I don't want to announce it yet. I don't want to spoil anything. It's going to be really cool. So tune in for that, but yeah, definitely like subscribe, comment, share. The only way we get this podcast out at this point in time is by doing that. I don't run ads. I, uh, I'm not looking for a sponsorship. I just want to give you guys value. Um, and, and that's what I hope I'm doing here. Appreciate it. Love you. And I'll talk to you next time.